Hello and uh, welcome to this session. Today we are looking at the evolution of the medical surgical nursing unit. As you know that the, the evolution of the medical surgical nursing reflects on the broader development of nursing as a profession and it's normally marked by significant changes in education, in the practice uh, of, of providing care to the patient and the very patient care over, over time. So it's divided into uh, various uh, sections. We have the ancient beginnings, where you find that in ancient times, the practice of medicine was closely linked with spiritual beliefs. So illnesses were often seen as manifestation of either good or bad evil spirits. And um, care for the sick was pr primarily provided in uh, temples or even in other places of worship. Uh, during this time, women were the ones that were predominantly the caregivers. And, uh, although they lacked formal training by modern standards, they developed valuable skills through experience. And as they say, experience is the best teacher in all things, right? Uh, it provides valuable experience that cannot be explained through uh, theory or any form of training. So... These women, they became adept with uh, the use of herbs and drugs. And uh, these, of course, were the primary treatment available at that particular time. So some of these women became well-known and respected, and they earned recognition as the physician of their era, even though they were not formally trained. So their knowledge and practice uh, laid groundwork for what will eventually become the field of nursing. So in the 17th century, we had St. Vincent de Paul, who was a French Catholic priest. He began to advocate for women to receive some form of training for their caregiving work so that they could be efficient in what the work that they were doing at that particular time. So although this training was rudimentary uh, compared to today's uh, standards, it marked an important step towards formalizing education for nurses. So we had the first real hospital training, uh, training school for the nurses that was established in Kiswa, Germany in 1846. This school represented a significant advancement in nursing education by providing a structured training for nurses. From there on now, we had the Florence Nightingale era. As you know, Florence Nightingale, who later became a pivotal figure in modern nursing, received her training in this Kaiser uh, Hospital in Germany. This education equipped her with skills and knowledge that are needed to revolutionize uh, nursing. So in 1860, Florence Nightingale founded the first nursing school designed primarily to train nurses at St. Thomas Hospital in London. Uh, this school was uh, the groundbreaking because it focused on educating nurses rather than merely providing nursing services to the hospital, therefore setting a new standard for the nursing education. So you all know Florence Nightingale who is commonly referred to as the lady with the lamp and this is mainly because of her work tending to wounded soldiers during the Crimean War. She lived between the 1820 and 1910. So from Florence Nightingale now we had expansion of nursing activities in the United States. Uh, the model established by Florence Nightingale spread to the United States with the establishment of nursing schools in New York City, New Haven, that's the Connecticut, and Boston in 1873. So these schools were among the first in the U.S. to provide formal nursing education, and this laid the foundation for the professionalization of nursing in the United States. Nursing therefore emerged as one of the most important professions available to women especially before the broader uh, social changes that were brought about by the feminist movements in the 1960s. So during this period, nursing provided women with a respected and essential role in health care, and it offered opportunities for professional development and independence at a time when very few career paths were open to them. 
So in the United States, in the 19th century and uh, between 19th century and early 20th century, there was emergency of specialized hospital wards. So patients were typically assigned to separate wards based on their medical needs. Uh, it could be medical, surgical, or obstetric uh, units. So nursing education in the hospital training began to reflect on this division. So we could have those who are training to be surgical nurses, medical nurses, or obstetric nurses. So the curriculum was designed to prepare nurses specifically to work in these different uh, type of units. And this ensured that they were well equipped to meet the unique needs of patients in each area. This specialization within hospitals and corresponding changes in the nursing education laid the groundwork for the development of more focused and specialized nursing roles. So nurses were trained not just as general caregivers, but also, but as professionals with specific expertise in various areas of patient care, such as the surgery, internal medicine, and obstetrics. Nursing students were expected to master not only the theory and treatment of abnormal physiological condition, but also to provide comprehensive care. So this approach included understanding the role of health promotion and recognizing the psychological, social, and physical factors that influence a patient's health. So nursing curricula in the 1960s began to integrate this holistic approach, ensuring that students learn to see patients as whole individuals rather than just uh, focusing on specific diseases or condition. So this integration marked a significant shift in nursing education, emphasizing the importance of total patient care. During the 1960s, nursing schools placed a strong emphasis on the interdisciplinary study and practice of medical and surgical nursing. So this approach of uh, interdisciplinary focus fostered collaboration among various uh, health care disciplines and this prepared nurses to work effectively in diverse health care teams. The focus on the disciplinary education was particularly strong in medical surgical nursing, where nurses were trained to address a wide range of patient needs from acute medical conditions to post-operative operative care. Then came in the, the 1960s to the 1970s, where we had the development of standards. You know, during this period, standards were developed for various nursing specialties, including medical surgical nursing. These standards helped to formalize and professionalize nursing practice, and this ensured consistency in the quality of care provided across different healthcare settings. The development of these standards also contributed to the growth of specialized nursing roles, and this allows nurses to develop expertise in specific areas of patient care. So the, in 1974, we had the first standard for medical surgical nursing practice that was uh, published by a committee within the Division on Medical Surgical Nursing of the American Nursing Association. So these standards played a crucial role in formalizing the practice of medical surgical nursing and set up the foundation for professional expectation in this specialty. We had the key focus here where we had uh, data collection. The standards emphasize the importance of thorough data collection as a foundational step in patient care. Then the development of the nursing diagnosis became a central element and this guided in creation of personalized care plans. Uh, ladies, if you have challenges in creating a nursing care plan, a nursing diagnosis, you can follow this link for more uh, details. Nurses were encouraged to establish clear, measurable goals for patient care. The goals were supposed to be smart. Then the students outlined the processes for developing, implementing, and evaluating comprehensive care plans tailored to individual patient needs. In the 1980s, there was a statement on the scope of practice. So the American Nursing Association released a statement on the scope of 
medical surgical nursing practice. This statement further defined and expanded the role of medical surgical nurses, emphasizing the complexity and the breadth of the speciality. The scope of practice statement provided a framework for the professional development of medical surgical nursing, and this ensures that they were well equipped to handle a wide range of patient care situations, ranging from acute to chronic conditions. So the evolution of medical surgical nursing simply reflects the broader development of nursing as a profession. It is characterized by gradual transition from informal caregiving rooted in Asian spiritual and cultural practices to a highly specialized and professional field. Beginning with the early contribution of women who, through experience, they laid the foundation for nursing. The field or the field of nursing has progressed through significant milestones, such as the establishment of the first formal nursing schools in the 19th centuries in Germany, London, and later in the United States, and the introduction of the structured nursing education in those schools. The 20th century uh, has really brought uh, further advancement, particularly with the emphasis on holistic patient care, interdisciplinary collaboration, and development of specialized standards and practices. The publication of formal uh, standards in the 1970s and 1980s by the American Nursing Association also marked a pivotal moment, and this provided um, clear guidelines and um, a defined scope of practice for medical surgical nursing. Uh, this development have ensured that nurses are well equipped to provide comprehensive patient-centered care across a wide range of medical surgical conditions. So today, medical surgical nursing uh, stands as a cornerstone of the nursing profession. It embodies a commitment of excellence in patient care and continual professional development and integration of evidence-based care. This evolution underscores the vital role that medical surgical nurses play in healthcare system, adapting to the changing patient needs and contributing to the advancement of nursing as a whole. I hope you're going to have interactive sessions in the medical surgical series. Welcome and let's share together.